Today we will have a look at the traffic generator tool that you can use to test your connections and throughput. There is another tool called bandwidth test that works from the client server paradigm, but the traffic generator is a much lower level tool that you can use even if you don't have a server at the other end and maybe you haven't even bothered to set up IP addressing. To demonstrate how this tool works, I have connected two routers with an Ethernet cable and I will be testing this connection by generating UDP traffic that travels from router 1 to router 2 and then gets router back through the same wire, effectively testing both directions TX and RX at the same time. There are other ways how you could set up your tests so that you can quickly check the functionality of multiple ports and multiple devices. But if you have one connection that you are wondering about, you want to know if there is any packet loss, latency, jitter, and whether the throughput is right, then you can do exactly what I'm about to do. The tool is easier to understand from the GUI, so that is where we will start. But if you were to use it regularly, which is what we do ourselves in the testing department, you would find that copying and editing existing configuration for this tool can be faster through the CLI. On Winbox, you can see that I have set up an IP address 10.10.0.1 slash 24 for the interface Ether5. And I have a wire connected from Ether5 to, to the second router, uh, Ether1, where I've set up the IP address 10.10.0.2. Let's open up Tools Traffic Generator. Here you can immediately see uh, that there are three fields that you can edit. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about those as uh, the numbers in these are essentially going to be reflected in the stats gathered. And you don't necessarily uh, need to look at those stats um, to see if everything is correct. You could just look at the interfaces to see uh, how much traffic is passing through and whether it's uh, jumping up and down. But I'll, uh, I'll open up the stats. Uh, so right now, obviously, there is nothing there. So now if we want to generate some traffic, we have to first create a packet template and then we can use that template to, uh, to generate a traffic stream. So click on packet templates, then click the add button. After the name for this packet template, you can configure the header stack. And uh, if you're familiar with the Ethernet frame, you know that things need to be in very specific order. So with the freedom here to completely edit the header, you can uh, definitely create some sort of dysfunctional packet. Um, so my advice would be to just leave the header stack as it is, which is a MAC address followed by IP followed by UDP. Next we have the data section, which by default is set to uninitialized, which means that the data payload will be set to all zeros. And that is the easiest way to generate uh, packets. Uh, it's easiest on the CPU on the router that is doing the generating, uh, but it's perhaps not the best way. Um, so you have other options there as well. You could uh, fill it with a specific byte. So if you didn't want zeros, you could um, choose specific byte and type in two Fs, for example, and that would then fill the uh, all the data payload with just Fs. Then you have the uh, random option, which is going to fill the data uh, payload with random bytes. Uh, but that will be computationally uh, very intensive on the router generating the traffic. So you might not be able to get um, the amount of traffic generated um, that you would like. And then finally, we have incrementing, which means that uh, the first byte of the data payload is going to be zero and uh, each next one will be incremented by one. So we'll just be counting up. Uh, I will leave it to uninitialized. Next we have port and interface. I will just set the interface to the Ether5 so that we're just going to be spewing out this traffic through Ether5 and we don't have need to worry about the port. This is not um, IPv4 port or anything like that. That it's just an uh, it's basically 
a router OS internal value um, that will be created dynamically so you don't need to worry about it. Then next we have the uh, Mac tab which is essentially what will be uh, contained in the Mac header. So in this case we want to specify the destination address and we can get that from the neighbor list by just copying the MAC address of our other router and just pasting here. You could specify also the uh, layer 2 protocol but we don't need to do that. Uh, the destination MAC address is all that's needed to get the packets traveling on layer 2 to the correct uh, location. But now, of course, next we want uh, the packets to be routed from router 2 back to router 1. So in the IP header, we want to specify the destination IP, which is actually the router 1 itself. Um, so we want to type in 10.10.0.1. The destination IP is already enough for a for this to work in a two router setup, but it doesn't hurt to also specify the gateway, which you would definitely need to specify in a, in a sort of multiple router setup or when there's a chain of routers. So the gateway in this case will be router two, which is 10.10.0.2. Uh, .10 okay, and then finally we got the um, UDP part where we could specify uh, specific source ports and destination ports. And here we could actually create a range uh, of ports. So we could go, oh, just use the ports from 1000 to 2000 as source ports. Oh. And then use uh, ports 3000 to 4000 as destination ports. Um, and click OK. And now we can create a traffic stream that will use this template. If you click on streams and click add, then we can create our first stream. We, we need to specify the packet size, which is the uh, data portion of the packet. So uh, we need to specify the packet size, uh, which is gonna determine uh, how big the data payload of the packet is. Uh, so I'm just going to set it to 512 as we commonly do in testing. And then the amount uh, of traffic that should be generated using this traffic stream. So let's set it to 5 for now, 5 megabits per second. The packet template is already chosen by default and click OK. Now if I click start and then look at my interfaces, I can see that uh, on either five, uh, five megabits per second are transmitted and five megabits per second are received. Uh, in the traffic generator stats, we can see more details, the TX uh, rate and the number of packets created and how many are received back and the RX rate. We can see the exact amount of lost packets, the lost ratio, and we can see a latency minimum latency average and latency maximum in microseconds as well as jitter. There is also this latency distribution section. If we click start on that, uh, we get some uh, graphical representation of uh, how long it takes for those packets to travel. So we got everything that we need to evaluate if this uh, Ethernet connection is working correctly. So we can try to bump up the traffic to test the throughput. So let's stop the stream and edit the uh, megabits per second. Let's set that to 1000. Start the traffic stream. And we can see that uh, we're generating about 946 megabits per second and receiving the exact amount back. Uh, let's check the uh, CPU load. So yeah, we can see that the 
uh, CPU is not overloaded and the maximum amount that is able to generate here seems to be 946 megabits per second and all of that we are receiving back. If I bump up the megabits per second a bit and stop and start the stream. Yeah, th that is the maximum amount that we can squeeze through this connection. 946 megabits per second is the actual throughput here. So those are the basics of how to use traffic generator to probe and test your Ethernet connections. Thank you for watching.